Hello, in this unit we're going to learn about indirect derivation. So far we have two derivation methods in our system. We have direct derivation and then we added conditional derivation and assumption for conditional derivation. Now we're going to add a third assumption for indirect derivation and a new way of boxing and canceling, indirect derivation. In this video I'll talk about indirect derivation in English. In the next video I'll explain how indirect derivation works in the formal system. And then in the last videos I'll talk about strategy with indirect derivation and do some examples in the system. So let's get started. So here's an, a valid argument. If I have a cookie, I will be happy. If I don't have a cookie, I will be happy. So I will be happy. Looks like a good argument. It is a good argument. Suppose you wanted to prove that it was a good argument. How might you do so? Well, here's how you might. You might say, suppose I won't be happy. Well, that means, given the first premise, I don't have a cookie. But it also means, given the pr second premise, I do have a cookie. Those are both modus tollens. Well, that's a contradiction. I have a cookie and I don't have a cookie. That's a claim and the denial of that claim, and that's a contradiction. And that means the supposition that we started with, I won't be happy, that supposition is false, and that means I will be happy, and that's the conclusion, and so we've shown that the argument is valid. And that's an indirect derivation in English. So one thing to note is, just to be clear, what do we mean by contradiction? So a contradiction is two sentences, one of which is the negation of the other. So, for example, John is tall and John is not tall. Or, if John is happy, then John is tall, and it is not the case that if John is happy, then John is tall. So in both of these cases, we have a sentence, either John is tall, or if John is happy, then John is tall, and then we have the negation of that sentence. And uh, that's what makes a contradiction. And a contradiction, it's impossible for both sentences in a contradiction to be true. Uh, there's always at least one of them is false. So in an indirect derivation, what happens? Well with this idea of contradiction in hand, let's look at how indirect derivations work. So we start with, we, we're, the conclusion of the argument is, I will be happy. So we start with, suppose I won't be happy. So what we're doing here is we're supposing the opposite of the conclusion. Why would you do that? To show that it's a bad supposition. We're going to say, well, let's suppose the conclusion is false, and then we're going to say, oh, that's a bad supposition, that can't be true. But if the conclusion, uh, if the opposite of the conclusion is false, then the conclusion is true. That's the strategy. So what do we do then? Well, we want to show it's a bad supposition. How are we going to do that? Well, we said we reasoned. We reasoned validly, and we got the we reasoned to the claims that I do have a cookie and I don't have a cookie, and we pointed out that that was a contradiction. So we validly reasoned from the premises and this supposition of the opposite of the conclusion. We validly reasoned from those to a contradiction. And as we just noted, a contradiction can't be true. One of the sentences in a, con in a contradiction is always false. Which one? Who knows? But it's impossible for both of the sentences to be true. At least one has to be false. Well, what does that mean? It means, so we, we reason to a contradiction. And we know the contradiction can't be true. But our reasoning was valid. And that means that our starting point also can't be true. There's got to be something in our starting point that's false. So what's our starting point? Well, we starting points, really. We have the supposition, uh, we suppose the negation, the opposite of the conclusion, and we have the premises. And so what we know is that that starting point, the supposition plus the premises, those cannot all be true. Well, that means that if the premises are true, if they're all, they can't, it, it can't be the case that they're all true. And so if all the premises are true, well, something's got to be false, and the only thing left over to be false is the supposition. Well, a false supposition is a true conclusion. And so what we've really established is that if the premises are true, then so is the conclusion. And that's what we want to do. We can conclude, in this case, I will be happy. So to summarize this, what happens? We validly reason. We start with the premises and the opposite of the conclusion. And we reason to a contradiction. That means that if the premises are true, then the conclusion is false. And that means that if the premises are true, then the conclusion is true. And that's what we want to establish when we're, uh, it, it, that's when we're trying to val reason validly. That's our goal, and that's why indirect derivation works. We reason from the premises plus the opposite of the conclusion uh, to a contradiction. That tells us that the group of claims, the premises, plus the negation of the conclusion can't all be true. And that means that if the premises are true, 
then the opposite of the conclusion is false, and that means that if the premises are true, then the conclusion is also true, and that means the argument is valid. So that's why indirect derivation is valid. We'll look at how it works in the formal system in the next video.